So what distinguishes a t-test for two independent samples and a t-test for two paired samples? Well, let's go through a simple example. Suppose we're dealing, we, we're interested in the average height of boys and the average height of girls, okay? And what we do is we take a random sample of boys, a random sample of girls, and then we calculate the sample average height for boys, sample average height for girls, and then we compare them. Now, there's really no relationship between our, our first sample and our second sample. This was just a random sample of boys, and this is a random sample of girls. So there's no real direct relationship. So this would be a um, t-test for two independent populations, okay, or two independent samples. Now, how does that differ? from a paired t-test. Now suppose instead we're interested in um, comparing the average heights of brothers and sisters. Okay, So we have the brothers and sisters here. Okay, So this is a first, first family, right? So brother and sister. Okay, This is a second family. Okay, The second pair of siblings, the third pair of siblings, and so on. Now, as you can see, each the we we have two samples here, but they're not completely independent of each other. Each observation is paired or linked, right? These two are from the same family. These two brothers and sisters are from the same family. They're from the same family, and so on. Okay, and so that's what we'll be dealing with here. So this is a um, t test for paired samples or paired populations. Okay, so let's go through a worked example. So we'll, we'll work through this from scratch, okay? A manufacturer produces a deluxe and a standard model of an automatic sander designed for home use. Selling prices obtained from a sample of retail outlets follow are as follows. So we have seven outlets and we have the different prices for deluxe and the standard version of the product. The manufacturer's suggested retail prices for the two models show a $10 price differential. Use a 5% significance level and test that the mean difference between the prices of the two models is $10. Develop the null and alternate hypotheses. Calculate the value of the test statistic. If required, enter negative values as negative numbers. What's the 95% confidence interval for the difference between the mean prices of the two models? Okay, the first thing we have to do here is recognize that we're dealing with, a, uh, with, with, a, with two paired samples. Okay, so we're dealing with paired samples. So we don't have an independent sample of deluxe models and an independent sample of standard models and we're comparing the average. What's happening is that they're all paired by the same outlet, by the same shop. So shop number one sells a deluxe and standard. Shop number two sells deluxe and standard. Shop number three also sells deluxe and standard and so on. So each of these observations, each deluxe and standard is actually paired they're paired or they're related based on the fact that they're sold at the same shop, similar to the brother and sister example. Okay, so the first thing we have to do here, the first thing we have to do is we need to calculate what we call the difference. Okay, so I'm going to call it D, okay, which is a difference, which would be the price difference between deluxe and standard. Okay, so all you have to do here for a paired sample is once you have the raw data, you have to calculate the difference of each of these. Okay, so deluxe minus standard. All right, so 40 minus 27, that's equal to 13. 39 minus 28, that's equal to 11. Okay, we have 8, 7, 10, 7, and 7. Okay, now it's actually very straightforward. From now on, all we're going to deal with is this here, the differences. Okay, you can ignore this data. So now this is like a t-test for a sample mean or a population mean. Okay, so let's um, let's answer this question. So it's fairly straightforward from here on end. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to set up the null and alternate hypotheses. Okay, so what is the null hypothesis? Okay, so we want to test. Okay, so so we want to test whether these differences is equal to ten or not. Right, so we're asked to test whether the difference in the two models is equal to ten dollars or not. So mu d, so the average of those differences is equal to 10. The alternate hypothesis, which is the complete opposite of that, is that the average of those differences is not equal to 10. Okay, And we have to um, calculate a few things. Um, 
<clears throat> we need to write down everything we know about the question. So we know that n equals to 7. This is a sample size. So if we look here, we actually have sample shops or sample outlets. Sorry. We have 7 shops or 7 outlets. Okay. We have to calculate the average for D. Okay. And if you punch that into your calculator, you'll find that your average for D is equal to 9. Okay. And your standard deviation for D, okay, if you punch that into your calculator, you'll find that to be 2.38. And finally, they also ask us to test at the 5% significance level, so we know alpha is 5%. Okay, so there are a few ways you could answer this. So you can answer this using the rejection regions and drawing the distribution, but they've asked us to answer this using um, by drawing a... 95% uh, confidence interval. All right, so how does that look like? Well, let's the formula for a 95% confidence interval equals to this. All right, so it's our sample average plus or minus, okay, a t critical value, okay, for alpha divided by 2 because it's a two tailed test and our degrees of freedom, okay, our, you know, relative to our degrees of freedom. Sample standard deviation divided by, oh, ND, <laughs> our, our sample size, okay, it's N. Now, um, I'll show you, I'll, I'll interpret this confidence interval for you guys a little bit later, okay, but what we need to know now is just, let's calculate it first and then we'll interpret it. So the first thing is we already have this, right? We already know what the sample mean is. We also know what the sample standard deviation is, and we also know what our sample size is n. So the only thing we need to try to figure out is this thing here, okay? So what does that mean? Well, that's our t stat, okay? We know alpha is 5%, right? Alpha is 5% divided by 2, so that must be 2.5%, okay? And degrees of freedom, well remember degrees of freedom um, for hypothesis testing of sample means is always equal to n minus 1. So degrees of freedom is n, which is 7, minus 1, which is 6. Okay, so that's degrees of freedom for hypothesis testing for means. Okay, so what does that equal? Well, we're going to have to use our student t-table. So looking at our student t-table, what we find is this. Okay, so firstly, you look up at the corresponding degrees of freedom. So we know in our case, it's a degrees of freedom of 6. Okay. Um, and what we want is, remember, we want alpha on 2, okay, which is, so we're told alpha is 5%, so for a confidence interval, you always divide alpha by 2 when you're looking at your t-critical value, so that gives us 2.5%, okay? So what this means is that we want the area that gets cut, that gets cut off by our critical value to be 2.5%. And so we look up 2.5%, that's this thing here, okay? So if we look at the corresponding column and the corresponding row, we get 2.447. Okay, so now we know, now we know that what, oh, sorry, I have to zoom out. So now we know that we have 2.447, and we can simply sub that in. Okay, so let's sub that into this formula here. So what do we get? We get our 95%, confidence interval okay, is equal to all right, our sample mean, 9, uh, our sample mean for the difference, okay, plus or minus, okay, our t critical value that we've just found, 2.447, okay, times our standard error, which is our standard deviation, 2.38, divided by square root of our sample size, which is 7. Okay? So you'll get two numbers, right, because one number is 9 plus all that, the other, num the other number will be 9 minus all that. Okay? And what you'll find is that the smaller number is 6.799 and the bigger number is 11.201. Okay? So there are two things I want to tell you, there are two things I'd like to tell you guys about this. Okay? So the first thing is, to, is, um, is this. Remember our null hypothesis is that, okay? And our alternate obviously is the opposite. Okay? So basically, if our, pop, our hypothesized population mean lies between our confidence interval, then we do not reject the null hypothesis.
Okay, if our hypothesized population mean uh, does not lie between the confidence interval, then we reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, we can see that 10 lies between 6.7 and 11.2, so we do not reject our null hypothesis. Okay, All right, so we do not reject our null hypothesis in this case. Okay, now how do we interpret this confidence interval? A simple way to say, a simple way to say it is that we're 95% confident that our population mean lies between 6.799 and 11.201. So we're 95% confident. Okay, so um, we're 95% confident that our uh, population mean lies between these two numbers. Okay, now another way we could interpret it, the, the formal way of interpreting it is that if we were to um, sample from the population like a thousand times, okay, and for each sample we calculated confidence intervals, okay, for each sample we calculated con confidence intervals, about 95% of those confidence intervals will contain the true population mean. <laughs> Let me say that one more time, okay. So if we were to sample from the population, let's say, you know, a thousand times, so many, many times, okay? And for each sample, we calculated a set of confidence intervals, okay? On average, about 95% of those confidence intervals will contain the true population mean, okay? And that's the formal definition of confidence intervals. Okay, I hope this helps.